Welcome to the National Healthcare Safety Network, or NHSN Quick Learn Series. These are brief and informative presentations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They serve as an educational resource for healthcare facilities working to prevent healthcare association infections, or HAIs. This Quick Learn will provide an introduction to location mapping in the patient safety component of NHSN. After viewing this Quick Learn, the user will be able to discuss the importance of accurate location mapping in NHSN, define key terms used in map mapping locations, describe the NHSN mapping rules, and outline the steps to define and map a location in NHSN. This quick learn will end with a knowledge check, which will go over common mapping scenarios and the possible mapping options in these scenarios. The NHSN location types have been developed to identify populations within different facilities. NHSN tries to categorize these patients and the incident of HAIs and other events in quote-unquote like populations. These patients are believed to have similar risk of HAIs. They could have similar devices, similar invasive procedures, and they may have similar host factors. NHSN surveillance modules, especially the patient safety component, utilize the location type as a risk factor. It is really important to correctly map locations in order to understand how HAI rates are split by each individual location type. NHSN pulls the mean rates by location type, so if a location is incorrectly mapped, it can affect the validity of not only your local data in comparisons to the national data, but also our national database. If your facility contributes to your state health department data, incorrectly mapping a location could impact your state's metrics and may require some additional validations on their part. NHSN promotes the correct location mapping from the first time the location is used. Mapping your facility's locations and units within your hospital incorrectly limits the ability to compare your facility's HAI data to the NHSN data and compromises the data validity for identified trends in HAIs. This is a decision flow chart to outline the steps to define and map locations in NHSN. We will walk through each step in the following slides. Step one is to review the patient mix. Step two is to define the acuity level. And step three is to define the type of service. We will start with step one of mapping a new location, which is reviewing the patient mix. Each patient care area in a facility that is monitored for NHSN is mapped to one or more CDC locations. The specific location code is determined by the type of patients that are cared for in that area, which is also known as the patient mix. NHSN recommends that facilities review patient data in that unit for the last full calendar year to determine the patient mix. If a full year is not available, then facilities should review the data of at least three months or any data available for that unit. Acuity billing data should be reviewed to determine the patient mix since it is considered the most accurate depiction of the patient's illness and reason for being admitted to a particular unit. If this data is not available, the next best option is to review admissions and transfer diagnosis data. After reviewing the available data to determine patient mix, the next step is to determine the acuity level. The 80% rule should be applied when determining acuity level for a unit based on the patient mix data. If 80% or more of the patients in an area are the same acuity level, then the user can continue on to step three of the mapping flowchart. If the unit does not meet the 80% rule for acuity level, then virtual locations or mixed acuity can be considered for mapping a unit. Virtual locations are used in NHSN when a patient care area is unable to meet the 80% rule for a location designation, but the facility still wants to report its surveillance data for each of the major patient types in that unit. If your facility is capturing patient days and device days electronically, it is recommended to talk to the IT department or electronic health record system administrator to discuss the possibility of this data to be split to accommodate virtual locations. Mixed acuity units are intended for locations that are comprised of patients with varying levels of acuity and do not meet the 80% rule. If you decide to map a location using the mixed acuity designation, be aware that NHSN does not plan to publish national pool mean rates for this location type at this time. Finally, Mapping locations using the mixed acuity designation could have implications on data reported for the CMS Hospital and Patient Quality Reporting Program. More information on mixed acuity units can be found in Chapter 15 of the Patient Safety Manual. Tab reviewed Step 1, Defining and Mapping Locations in NHSN, and Step 2, Defining the Acuity Level. We will now review Step 3, which is Define the Type of Service. In this step, we will review how to define if the location is a designated specific service type or if it is a general medical, surgical, or medical surgical unit. If the location is a specific service type, 
then the 80% rule should be applied. If the location is a general medical, surgical, or medical surgical unit, then it would be determined by following the 60-40 rule. If 60% of patients of a unit are either general medical or surgical patients, then the location should be mapped as a majority of the patient mix. If the mix of patients does not meet the 60-40 rule, then the unit should be mapped as a medical surgical location. If the unit does not meet either rule, then other mapping options to consider would be to map a single combined medical surgical location or virtual locations. It is important to know that 100% of patients in this unit should be included in your surveillance data regardless of the patient type. Now that we have covered the introduction to location mapping in NHSN, let's go over some common mapping scenarios encountered by users and provide recommendations for mapping based on the information we have learned today. This is a simple example of how to apply the 80% rule when mapping a new location in the NHSN application. Let's say you have an intensive care unit and 85% of patients in that unit are burn patients and 50% are trauma patients. Please pause the video and take a moment to determine the acuity level and patient mix using the information provided. After reviewing the information, this unit meets the 80% rule for the acuity level because 100% of patients are critical care patients, and it also meets the 80% rule for specific service because 85% are burn patients. This unit should be mapped as a burn critical care unit, and all patients, regardless of service type, should be included in the surveillance efforts for this location. Scenario 2 is an example where the 80% rule is not met when mapping a new location in an HSN. Let's say you have a unit and 60% are medical ICU patients and 40% are step-down patients. The unit does not meet the 80% rule for acuity level, therefore, the unit couldn't be mapped as a medical ICU or a step-down unit alone. Please pause the video and take a moment to determine the acuity level and patient mix using the information provided. One way of mapping this unit is by using the mix acuity designation. As mentioned earlier, using this designation may have implications on data that your facility reports to CMS or your state's reporting mandate. So it is important to take this into consideration when mapping a location using the mix acuity designation. Here is another way you can map the same unit using virtual location. Let's say your facility would like to follow HAI surveillance for each acuity level separately by keeping those patients separate. So for this particular unit, you would have two locations in NHSN to report. Please pause the video and take a moment to determine the acuity level and patient mix using the information provided if you were to map this unit as two virtual locations. If you want to split this area in two virtual locations by acuity level, the first location could be mapped as a medical critical care in NHSN because 100% of patients are critical care acuity level and general medical service type. The second location could be mapped as a step-down unit because 100% of patients are step-down acuity level. In terms of surveillance, you would collect and enter data for each of these NHSN virtual locations separately, and you would obtain rates, standardized infection ratios, and standardized utilization ratios for each location separately. We have reached the end of this quick learn on location mapping. In addition to the information provided in this quick learn, there are many resources available on the NHSN website for location mapping, including the location description chapter in the NHSN manual. Here are the link to these resources. If you have any questions regarding the content of this presentation, please contact us at nhsn at cdc.gov. Thank you for your attention.